Uh, so this picture of 24 ambulances queuing to get into the Queen Alexandra, Alexandra Hospital excuse me, in Portsmouth on New Year's Eve demonstrates just how pressurised things are. It just looks like a car park, doesn't it, Charlotte? But actually, every one yeah. of those ambulances has a patient in the back waiting to be seems cleared. It crazy, doesn't it? They're waiting to get into hospitals. And for people who need ambulances, mm. they are sat there not being able to move the patients on. Reported that the paramedics had to wait five hours to hand those patients over. Which isn't good. Well, Dr Ian Higginson, who's from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, joins us now live from Devon. Morning to you. I mean, we just saw all those ambulances queuing up. Have you ever seen a situation like this before? Because, you know, often at this time of year, we know it gets busy, we know there are extra pressures, but is this year particularly bad compared to others? Good morning. Um, it's too early uh, to look at the data, but certainly from my perspective um, and the perspective of our members, this winter is shaping up to be the worst we've seen for a very long time. And why is that then? Well, this is the result of a, a, a long um, deterioration in conditions within the emergent, urgent and emergency uh, care setup within the NHS. This has been a slow burn crisis for many years, really. I think, uh, Dr Higginson, you said that, that a few years ago things seemed to have improved a little bit, but we've slipped back. What was, what was better those few years ago when things improved? And, and what do we need to get back in order to make sure that things like the picture of the 24 uh, ambulances stuck in A&E in, in &E or waiting to deliver patients doesn't happen? So what we know is that the dedicated emergency doctors and nurses can't do our... We can't do our job uh, if we're having to treat patients in corridors. So to do our job, what we need is the tools to do that. So we need uh, beds in hospitals to admit patients to. We need staff to see patients when they come to our departments and we need um, uh, social care to be able to help keep patients flowing through hospitals so that we can keep admitting patients to hospital when they need it and all of that has been deteriorating for many years. And how much of a risk do you think this is for patients then? It's very hard to quantify the risk exactly but we do know that the sort of crowding that you've shown on your VT where patients are waiting in corridors or can't get into hospital because ambulances can't offload. We know that's associated with harm. It's very difficult to say how much harm, but it goes without saying that we can't do our jobs when our patients are in ambulance corridors. So the NHS uh, have cancelled all non-urgent operations, um, and I'd imagine there'll be people waking up, I'm sure I've been informed about this, but waking up this morning thinking, I desperately need a hip replacement, I can't walk, for me this is an emergency, or knee replacement, or any sort of uh, operation that's been cancelled, thinking this is not fair, I absolutely, I, my, my quality of life is being hindered enormously, and now I've got to wait till the middle of next year to get a chance to even fi try and reschedule it. Yes, I agree. It's, uh, for those sorts of things, it's very distressing to have any operation cancelled. And for many patients, that can happen more than once at a time. Uh, the simple matter is, if we can't fit patients into hospitals, uh, the operations can't be performed. And that's why, I guess, uh, the NHS leadership has taken that action at this time. And what's the answer, though? Because, you know, there's not a bottomless pit of money to be able to say, well, let's put a cash injection in, you know, let's make more beds available, more staff available. There isn't a bottomless pit, but equally, uh, we can't expect doctors and nurses to do their job without having the tools to do it, and if there aren't enough of us. So part of the answer is more beds, more staff, and hospitals which are fit for purpose. Part of the answer is sustained and proper investment in social care, so that patients don't have to be looked after in hospital once their acute care is finished.